Hi, this is Boris. Welcome to uh, another Movie Messenger podcast. Um, today I don't have any guests, and uh, but it's okay. I'm just going to do it solo. So um, let's start there. Um, so just to introduce myself quickly, I am uh, Boris. Um, I'm a cartoonist, illustrator, a podcaster, and a teacher. I teach English and French. I um, so just talking about doing podcasts alone. Um, so. I started this channel so that I could create content like um, and mostly because I could have so that I could have virtual conversations that I cannot have in re- in real time or in with real in reality with the people around me so for example this movie uh, th- this this podcast is called movie messenger and of course it's because I, I love movies I'm a huge movie fan and um, I'm also a fan of other stuff like comics and, and stuff but you know um, I feel like movie I'm I'm a pretty I have a pretty good knowledge of like the movies and I've seen a lot of movies and um I in a way aspire to be a filmmaker myself one day so let's hope to that and actually on my channel uh there are some films we've made so okay so today we're going to talk about the first the things I do um and the first and and the the movies I watched and the series I'm currently watching and the series which are on my watch list on Netflix. Um, so and and uh, and and all through will be peppered with some, as usual, with some philosophical thoughts and some uh, my point of view on uh, what is going on. Right. Um, so first of all, motivation. So I was just thinking about this, like, um, and I think, so, this applies maybe to anything else. But so for me, I've all I love podcasts. I. <coughs> listen to a lot of podcasts when I'm drawing when I'm uh, when I'm doing my laundry or like when I'm uh, when I'm arranging my cartoons into f- files and so on when I'm when I'm cleaning my room and, and so on um, so and it came uh, there came a point where actually I wanted to do podcasts because I'm not a great conversationalist as, as I'm, I'm, I'm improving as a conversation conversationalist um, as I am doing podcasts and I think I just have interesting ideas and I wanted to share them um, because you know it's as, as I said it's in, I think it, most youtubers are like people who do video essays and so on in a way I think they do it because they are trying to fulfill a need which is to have conversations and engage in conversations and to be honest, I think as as much as I love the people I know um, around me, um, you know, they have their own lives and uh, they are busy and I'm busy. Or when they are busy, I'm 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 free. When they are busy and, and and vice versa. So sometimes you know you don't get I don't get to talk to people, right? And um, so, but uh, but still, your thoughts don't stop. So. It, this podcast is kind of a good way of like just putting stuff out there and when I said to myself I'm going to create content for this channel like because movie messenger here this is an audio you might be listening to this in the SoundCloud or on, on YouTube um, so I have a YouTube channel called movie messenger where I do videos about movies whether it's like some thoughts I have for example I made a m- video about special effects in Indian cinema and I propose the solution. Uh, I, I hope you'll check it out. And uh, re- so recently, the last video I made was uh, on the movie Venom, right? So which I which I saw last week, I think. Yeah, we'll talk about that in detail. Um, and uh, so yeah, go check it out. So uh, so just to start, like what I'm doing is uh, I have a YouTube channel called Movie Messenger. Um, I have another channel which is called Sketchman Boris. I have Instagram account sketchman underscore Boris. All these, all the things I'm saying uh, are are in the will be in the description below. The links will be in the description below, so you can check them out. So what I do on Instagram is I post regularly cartoons, like based on thoughts or some jokes I ha- might have. I don't know if the jokes land, but I just want to share them. And uh, occasionally I'll, I'll also do some digital art, um, which I which I'm I'm actually I'm terrible at painting. I'm. I think I'm a pretty good draftsman, but I think I'm a really horrible painter. So I'm 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 trying to improve painting 
um, through just through practice. And actually, I've already always done that. I think even with this channel, like when I started doing videos, I, I was not an editor, but then I just learned by doing it. And I think that the credit goes to the other YouTubers who have been fantastic. Like, uh, I mean, I personally started my YouTube channel after watching Nerdwriter, uh, who's a really great video essayist, and he's like continuing to put really con quality content out there, and, and I really appreciate that. He inspired me to actually to create my own YouTube channel. And then um, the w YouTube channel Wisecrack, whom I love, like they, they do what I wish I was doing, which is deep dive, in, dive into like, uh, like movies, series, series and uh, animation and so on, where, and take the philosophy, like what, what is the philosophical lessons we can take from those um, uh, mediums, right? Um, so yeah, so I have YouTube channel Sketchman Boris, YouTube channel Movie Messenger, uh, where where I talk about movies. Sketchman Boris, it's like I'm doing tutorials for drawings, so, so you can, if you want to learn drawing, you can check that out. Um, of course, I uh, I I want to become a cartoonist. I, I I identify myself as a cartoonist, as a comic book artist, and um, I am publishing for free a monthly series called Tech T E C H. You can check it out um, for free on uh, Webtoons. Webtoon is a, is a is a website application where you can read co uh, web comics for free. So I'm I'm posting there. Um, and um, what what else am I doing? Um, and I just recently started a blog, um, a daily blog. Like I call it a cartoon blog. Um, so I've been doing it for I think almost three weeks now. Uh, so so far so good. I've been able to post every day. So what that is is basically I do a cartoon every day based on a different thought or a different idea I had, and um, basically in this blog I elaborate a little bit about the the reason why I did this cartoon and the 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 thought process that brought me to uh, that topic or like or I just give my opinion on that topic. For example. In the future, I'm talking. I, I made a cartoon about skin whitening products. So you know, like, so I made a post about that. So, um, so you can check out my blog. Also, it's called SketchmanBoris.wordpress.com. Again, on the link in the description below. Um, so yeah, so those are like a uh, little bit the things I do. Uh, so yeah, YouTube channels, uh, Instagram, and uh, blog. And uh, I hope you check them out. Um, so to come back to the podcasting. I love podcasts, right? So that's why I started doing podcasts. So, and you might have noticed, like, there was a moment where I was doing podcasts with guests, and I thought, okay, I might, I think, I might get a guest every week, and I could do like an episode every week, each week. But actually, that didn't happen. Um, and then I caught, I got in a way, this support. I don't know how to call it, but yeah, I, I lost motivation, right? Like it's like going to the gym. If you don't do it regularly, like yeah, you, you might just you you will just stop going. So, and, and and I said to myself like, why do I need really need a guest? Because I mean, I of of course I love talking to the guests, and but actually I also have like a lot of things to say. So and you know I, I I watch a lot of things, I read a lot of things, I read books, and um, so there are things that I could uh, do to create interesting content, right? So. So I said to myself, okay, if I don't have a guest, I think I, I, I will do a solo podcast like I'm doing here now, right? So that's just to start. Um, and uh, and by the way, like, you know, um, just to tie it back a little bit about the... Because I, I tend to analyze everything. And um, <laughs> um, so when I... when You know, some people might say like, oh, you don't, don't, don't care about other people just um, like uh, I even say I'm going to curse now so we care <laughs> I, I, I even seen like codes or like people on Instagram posting like uh, oh it's like I'm happy when I don't give a fuck about what other people think right I mean okay it's uh, that's your the way you look at it but actually I was I always had this feeling that you know, I'm always thinking about the big picture, like what, like what, what brings us together. Like, I, I, that's why I love art. Like, I'm fascinated by art. Like, 
that's because it's one of the things that brings us together like love right and and i'm fascinated by the topic of love you can you can hear us talk about love in the pr previous podcast with me and with what um so uh and 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 you know so actually the point the the thing of saying just you don't care about um p other people is actually not really smart because I don't think you you don't exist in a bubble. You exist in a way in the consciousness of others. Like other uh, like what others th others think or what you think of yourself is what others think of yourself in a way. Um and actually I think I can maybe do a little bit of um, I was thinking about like the like the like the like the like the theory of singularity. I mean I'm I'm butchering this because I think I'm just having a really surface level reading of singularity because I think it's a really big topic. But for me it's like when I when I think about singularity I think about like the I was listening to a podcast by Grant Morrison which is who is like I think I've mentioned him many several times in my podcasts in my videos and so on. He's like my favorite author like uh with Neil Gaiman, Alan Moore and so on. And he in the podcast said that you know like 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 f four is it four billion i think four billion years ago if i'm not mistaken because the the earth the universe th is, is said to be 13.8 billion years old and i think the the life actually started um four billion years ago i think um give or take so imagine we started as a single cell organism right so and then that cell just split so he said that the the, the that cell that split i mean that cell might be in every one of our bodies which means as as humans is is every one of our body bodies right and that's a that's a beautiful thought to have um and the other thing is like i'm al al also um thinking about when you're angry with someone else um right i think the thing is that you are angry against yourself or y or you're angry against the part that concerns them you know um I d again i'm j i'm not a scientist <laughs> i'm not i'm not talking about it w w this with any scientific evidence but just just uh stay with me on this one um and um so singularity like so, so after i watched the anime series Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, it, it has taught me that because it's a it's a really blind short short uh, um, case study. I'm not going to spoil spoil it if, in case you haven't seen it. But because I, I and also I promise to dive deep into that anime series with Vidvat when he comes back uh, to Bangkok. Don't shout out to Vidvat if you're listening. Um, and but but okay. For example, let me tell you this story. My so I be, I I was on the phone with my mom. So my mom is living in India. I'm living in Thailand. I'm working in Thailand, and um, so she just went to for for grocery shopping or something. And uh, you know, in India, you have these what what we call auto rickshaws, which which are like three uh, three wheel vehicles in yellow and with a black top. Uh, maybe you've seen, um, like it's a tuk tuk, right? I think it's called tuk tuk. Um, Anyway, we call it auto rickshaw, okay? So, and the auto rickshaw driver suddenly, they were just waiting. F I think they they ordered something, a takeaway or something, and they were waiting. And and the rick the 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 um, the rickshaw auto rickshaw driver just went, ah, oh, fuck, you know, like he 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 seemed he was disgusted by something. And then my mom asked, like, oh, what 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 happened? Like, what what's going on? And then he said, like, look at that girl, like, you know, and then she just pointed to a girl and apparently that girl was wearing, I don't know what exactly what she was wearing because my mom didn't tell me the details, but, you know, apparently she was wearing a revealing clothes, right? Um, so now, okay, now, so this is another thing that I've been noticing is that whenever you have a feeling, I know it's really difficult, but I think whenever you have a feeling don't just act on that feeling right because i know people always say like oh just uh go with the flow and blah 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 but actually they say it with the with the surface level reading just just like i did with singularity but 
um just think about it like just when you, for example when you feel frustrated when you feel angry when you feel even when you feel happy when you feel like you when you feel you're obsessed with someone or something just just step back and let's look look at that short shortly just look at that feeling what why why do i feel like that so let's take this guy he was disgusted after seeing that girl right okay so you might ask like what is my opinion about in india uh about women wearing revealing clothes to be honest for me it's all about choice they need to have the choice to wear whatever they want now of course like i think in i read an article in 2000 uh, dated from 2011 that india is the fourth most dangerous place in the world for women i don't know if it has improved but you know uh, still you know it's 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 pretty it's pretty high um in the world right and um so of course like uh, when uh, when a woman dresses in in a revealing way she gets attention um and not the good ones right um so why did he feel disgusted i think it's because he was not disgusted of her really i think he was disgusted of the desire the, the des- desire in a way he felt inside for that woman right so it's i think it's two parts like i think first he felt a desire for the woman because he's a man and in a straight man and he felt that and then i think of course we have the stigma or we, you have the it's it's a taboo right in in, in india and, I, and and i think also in in, in other cultures is that women's body have become a taboo and it's like it feels like i'm becoming a feminist or something i mean i don't know anything about feminism i'm just saying what i think uh my i'm just sharing my opinion so he the first first part is that he felt desire you know he 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 felt a desire for that woman and then i think there was another another feeling which he had which was desiring this kind of woman is wrong because probably he has seen you know from movies or like images that you have been f- like force fed that that woman dressing like that is usually uh you know a, a whore or a <laughs> or um a bad woman right so then i think those two elements just uh came together to feel that feel of disgust so in a way he felt disgusted by his own feelings towards that woman he was not disgusted of that woman you, uh, right so so i think that's why like when, when i when we say singularity is not that we are all connected like human centipedes but i just feel like we are in a way connected in this network of feelings i think because we make it even though it it may seem like we're making decisions based on irrational thought and thought out uh patterns i think we make uh, for me 90 uh, and also i've been reading uh, the uh, book enigma of reason we make like most of our decisions based on our feelings based on how we feel okay um even actually like so i'm i'm reading at the moment uh, omodius uh, because i you know m- my target is to read one book a month um and this is a big book so i think it's been more than a month uh, and and i love this book because i read fa- first sapiens by yuval noah harari and so homo deus is is a uh, second book and in it he talks about how so he's trying to explore why we as humans have become the most important animals in on the planet earth right because you know we manage to and 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 the uh, and the short version of the of the story is that you have to read it to to go to see his thought process and how he proves that but actually we've been the most efficient animal because not because we are we have a bigger brain or uh, we have a different connection in our neurons and so on it's because we have learned how to cooperate on a big scale right like for example i'm making a podcast somewhere in, in thailand in bangkok and you're probably sitting somewhere else listening to it and then i am somehow talking directly to you right so that i mean we've managed to create these connections i don't know if these connections always work but anyway this is another topic right <laughs> so anyway like uh, so again um to come back to the pre-initial point which i had was uh, 
I can't ignore the other other people's opinions because other people are important to me. Like I'm nothing without other people. Like th- there is a without other people Boris is just a a, hu- a biological body, right? And I know it seems really harsh and <laughs> but but actually I I really do believe that. Like for example, what the, like you know there's a famous riddle what is the um, uh, one thing that belongs to you but is mostly used by others it's your name right so even if when I say Boris like I am identified Boris mostly by others so just to say this when if you are thinking like uh, oh I don't I don't really care about others and so on it's for me it's not a smart move right so uh, okay so this was just uh, to tell you that I was I lost motivation because I was saying to myself I can't do a podcast just wi- without any guests which is wrong because podcast is just sharing uh, our, uh, your thoughts and I'm doing that right now. Um so um as I said um check out my video on Venom um on my channel Movie Messenger. Um so I watched it last week and so I was just talking to a friend and um so he so he recommended it to me and I think if if you still haven't seen it go watch it because I know it's not the it's not Logan it's not the dark knight it's not um it's, it's not it's not a great it's not a like a one a great like really well told superhero story but this is how an actor makes a difference, right? In a movie, like this is why casting is so important. Just like uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr. as as Iron Man, like that's that's I think that every everything that Marvel has done, il- like Jack, is is holds on to that uh, first casting choice by John Favreau. I don't know whoever cast. Uh, I think it's John Favreau. Um, and uh, so Tom Hardy just he's having a blast in this role like and and he and he's having so much fun it's it's contagious so it uh and you and and i, and I really enjoyed the movie i didn't get bored and uh and, and you know so much so i made a video right so go go check it out i think venom venom is great and, I'm, and i can't wait for anything it's making a lot of money so they're co- probably going to make a sequel sequels and um can't wait um and also so I I live in Bangkok and at the cinema at the moment uh, I went to check out and I think the only movie this week which was close to interesting was The First Man with the Ryan Gosling but I saw the length of that movie and <laughs> I don't know it's like two and a half hours or something and it, and I need someone to watch it with me and I'm finding it that as I get old it's getting harder and harder to find people to watch movies with um, <laughs> everybody is busy with their own things life I guess um okay the other thing is um uh my friend again uh, just reminded me that uh Netflix uh Batman Ninja is on Netflix. Um I don't know if you know this but uh, I'm a huge Batman fan and uh, of course I love everything which is like ancient Japan. You could check out the video we made about um uh Blade of the Immortal. Uh so when two of them combined Batman Ninja actually it was it was really great like and and actu- and, and for me to be honest DC is very th- so. D- DC is the company that owns the characters like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Marvel is the characters who owns like the Avengers, right? Um, DC um, is very strong. Like they are really good at making these direct to DVD movies. Um, I mean, I call them direct to DVDs, but you know they are stream on streaming now. But um, you know what I mean? <laughs> like those those are not. These are not um, animated movies, which will be have will have a, a theatrical release, and and I think that's what the and I know there are a lot of videos on YouTube that people say what DC should do and what the mistakes that DC is making, blah blah blah. And I think this is really simple: just do what you are doing in animated movies, like just to go crazy, with just take a really great comic book or like a a, a concept from a comic book. Just like just like they did with Flashpoint Paradox, uh, Dark Knight Returns, of course, like All Star Superman. Oh my God, these these are really great movies. Like you, I mean, the, of course, like the comic. You have to read the comics to get the full 
impact of the story but you know like i think the the, the movies are a really good representation of what the comics were actually um yeah so i think th- 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 and B- bad so i al- highly recommend batman ninja especially if you love like crazy and you have to go in no realizing that it was directed by um a japanese team and it it was made by a japanese team like the design is made by the japanese uh artists and uh, and, and the designs are cool and the st- and you never get bored like there's always some like th- some at certain point like uh, there is a the style of animation changes and i love that stuff so Batman Ninja approved it's really great go watch it um so i watched a movie 3 three, three days ago um and it's Spike Lee's Black Klansman wow that's um it's a really powerful movie i um i actually i, I watched the trailer and uh, i know that Den- Denzel Washington's son is in there and i love Adam Driver so it, and and Spike Lee I love Spike Lee like I, I like do the right thing is one of my favorite movies like it's uh, it's so so good like each time i watch it it's it's just stirs up conversations about racial relations <laughs> um and then I, i was just talking to a friend i think this movie is really is really good is really strong and it's and Spike Lee coming back strong because for me to be honest i i think i haven't seen seen a I haven't seen his I was I haven't seen Spike Lee movies since Inside Man I think because I think he made a move he made some movies in between and I think just before this the last movie he made if I'm not mistaken is uh o- the remake of Old Boy the cur- with with uh, Josh Brolin and uh, I don't know I don't know if I watched that because I love the original so much and I don't know if I'll have time to watch that but uh, maybe I'll I'll give it a try Um uh, so uh, yeah I I watched uh Black Lands Plan it's really great um the and it's shot on film so it's it looks beautiful and it's the shots uh, the sh- shot selections are great uh, I'm not a cinematographer but you know I love when I d- I do make comics so I I love the way they they frame things and like the um uh like the symmetry like black back and forth and stuff I I just love that. It's it was really great. Um so yeah, it's Spike Lee coming back strong. And I think we need more movies like this. Um uh, Blank Clansman, I don't know if it will be re- I was stru- I saw it on on streaming on online because I don't know if it will be released here in in um in Bangkok. So yeah, um so I highly recommend it. Um uh, I don't want to spoil anything. go check out blank clansman it's it's great um the the st- I, i mean i don't know how because it's based on a true story but i don't know how accurate it's to the reality but anyway it's it's a it's a great movie um let's talk books um since the last time i recorded the podcast i've read some great books um and as i said i was i thought i was going to update you on uh, all the books i read but you know uh, like i said i lost motivation so i uh, here we go like i i think after the last time uh, i read i i've read neil gaiman's norse mythology which is really great and i couldn't help while i was reading it to have images of chris hemsworth and uh, tom hiddleston as uh, thor and loki but then it's they are different characters in Norse mythology and and i think the actors of course they're brilliant they they made it their own and but the, but the neil gaiman's version are uh are different and as usual neil gaiman's writing is brilliant and it's not a uh, complete it's it's i like the way it it it's built like it's it's like <coughs> it's like adventures of thor and loki like it it's a uh, it could have been like a animated series where each episode you see a part of uh the North mythology. Yeah, it's great. And then I read Gillian Flynn's so Gillian Flynn is is the uh, she wrote Gone Girl. Um and also I see I saw that she is she has co-written or written the screenplay for uh, uh Widows the the next uh Steve McQueen f- movie which is going to come out soon. So I'm I'm also looking forward to that. Uh so I read Gillian Flynn's Sharp Objects and oh it's I can't I can't speak about it without spoiling it but it's um I'm not going to spoil it but it p- 
like you know as a man reading it especially with a women protagonist like it's interesting to see how it's written by a woman of course Gillian Flynn right and it's interesting to so see how what details women pay attention to like I could read that same story written by a man it would be completely different and uh, you know and 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 the way she shows the relationship between her and her mother her sisters like other girls and it's it, like it's a it's a really like one or like a really great mystery and it just keep like i think i haven't read any other mystery novel of that length i mean it, it is a like i don't know how long it was but so quickly because i just wanted to know what what is going to happen next right and it's so gripping and uh, uh, if you have if you if you're looking for a murder mystery to 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 read if you're trying to, if you're trying to read a murder mystery and you don't know what books to what book to uh, if you haven't read it get sharp objects by Gillian Flynn it's really it's great um, to come back to movies I have um, watched uh, pie by Darren Aronofsky this is a movie I wanted to watch for a long time. It's not a, it's not a new movie. It's, it's, it's. A, I think it's. I don't know if I'm not mistaken. It's his first movie. I love Darren Aronofsky, um, but I don't know if it was because I was tired. I watched it in the in a Sunday last Sunday morning. I don't know if it's because I was tired because I didn't sleep the the the, the night before and and I was just uh, like. Le- <laughs> I was watching it and it's a really it's it's a really great movie like I I watched it till the end. I don't know if I really understand it. I think it's one of those movies you have to watch several times maybe. But um I it has this eerie feeling and it's it's a uh, it is yeah it it is a great um it is a great great uh movie I don't know I just felt I think I need to watch it again because I did I didn't maybe my, I had too much expectations but I don't know it didn't do anything for me right and um, and I'm sure like if I go on the internet and read about it about the theories and the analysis I'm sure I'll find a lot of interesting things but I don't know I I usually like these kinds of films but I think that's it I think that I was too tired and also it also depends I don't know wh- when you watch movies but I think for me I should watch movies when I think at night because that's when I have the best experience I noticed that in the morning when I watch movies in the morning it's good right I mean you're just in bed and watching a movie and but then I think it's I don't know in the morning it doesn't stick with me so I think maybe I should watch change my habits to watch movies in, at night but anyway um, again I don't know <laughs> I just felt like it didn't do anything for me um, so I'm and, and, and to, to, to go on to series I am a huge fan of Big Mouth which is an a animated series I love the season one and I just started watching season two, and I I have to say it's better than season one, and it's even funnier, crazier. I love it, um, and it's actually it's even better in the sense that not only because it's, it's it's funnier, but also I feel like there's a genuine attempt to inform uh, kids. Like you know, I, I wish I was. <laughs> I don't know I don't know w- what age uh, is is like what what from what age you're allowed to watch Big Mouth but if I was 13 14 I wish I had this kind of series to watch to learn about uh sexuality like what's going on and so I mean you know it's it, they they represent it in a really cartoonish crazy way but it's I I still f- you actually you know like for me I've always uh, like the art is about how you feel and I really feel that they really do want to. This is a genuine attempt to genuine attempt to um, to to inform the audience uh, while entertaining them, right? And and I love that. So yeah, um, Big Mouth, second season. Uh, I have to continue, and I think maybe I'll do. Uh, I'll I'll give an update when I finish watching it. The other series is um, I started watching is the third season of Daredevil. Um, again, I love. 
Daredevil. I I loved the first. I mean, I think first season is the best because it had uh, um, Wilson <laughs> Wilson Fisk. Second season was great too. Uh, third season is great, and I, I just find like Charlie Cox, like the 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 actor who plays uh, Daredevil, is is like a really charming actor. Like he, I don't know. I I, I really like and and you might have heard that they cancelled Luke Cage and uh, Iron Fist. So I loved first season of Luke Cage. I couldn't finish the first season of Iron Fist. <laughs> I wanted to watch it because I wanted to watch Defenders to see what happens, but I couldn't. So I just directly watched Defenders instead of watching uh, first season of Iron Fist. I didn't, of course, I didn't watch the second season. Um, I started watching the second season of Luke Cage. And I, f- I don't know. I, 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 I thought it was over the top. I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't feel it. So, I stopped watching the cage too. <laughs> but so I was just talking to my friend. I was sa- saying to him, maybe, I think in the beginning, they were focused on making. Da- I, I don't know. I'm just theorizing this. I think Netflix, uh, the, the Marvel, Jeff Loeb or I mean, who, whoever is in charge of this, uh, the, these, uh, these uh, Marvel Netflix series. I think they wanted to make only Daredevil in the beginning, so I, I feel like the quality, the concentration, w- the focus was on Daredevil, so the quality was like better than the other series, and I still feel the quality is better, right? Like, like for example, the season three, I, I'm going to finish it. Like, I, f- I feel that it's it's going to be great. Um, um, and then I think they wanted to capitalize, or like they want to, they wanted to capitalize on the fact that. The, the the success of the Avengers and and so on they, so they wanted to build a team here right so and I think that's why they started building towards Defenders I can defend I watched defend the full series Defenders but I love Sigourney Weaver but <laughs> I don't know it was disappointing so and I'm not saying this because I'm biased because I n- I mean I have to admit I, of course like I, I think maybe unconsciously I'm biased because I I'm a huge DC, DC characters fan. I, I never connected with Marvel characters. I don't know. I just feel like DC characters are... I'm not going to say real, but... I just feel like they're more epic. They're more... I don't know. They're more dramatic, I think. So, uh, yeah. So, Daredevil, I'm going to uh, continue watching. And just before I started recording, I was watching Season 5 of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which I love. <laughs> and I'm going to watch it, continue watching it after I record this podcast. And it's great. Like, I don't know how they do it, but they just keep it constantly, consistently funny. And uh, I remember at a certain point they were cancelled, and I'm really glad they're back. And I hope we'll get more. And it's, uh, it's, it's really great. Like, you... I can't get enough of the characters. Um... And the other one is uh, I got nostalgic and watched the episodes of the original He-Man series, animated series. I have to say, like, my all-time favorite, favorite, best intro to the cartoon is He-Man's intro. Like, I, I know that intro by heart. <laughs> uh, I don't know, there's something... And I, I, I think there's also, like, I, I remember... The first toy I had, the figu- figurine I had, was uh, He-Man and Skeletor. And I remember it was also pretty expensive back then. But, uh, you know, it was uh, when I was in India. And it, it's, like, I don't know, it's, it's, I just love it. Like, it's, w- of course, if you watch it now, it's very... Everybody says out loud what they're thinking, what they're going to do, what they just did. I know, like, <laughs> there's no room for subtlety or nuance, but I, l- I just love it. Like, it's... It's just entertainment, pure and simple. And there's a there's a there's a moral at the end, and you know <laughs> it's it's great. Um, so as I said, I listen to a lot of uh, podcasts, and I love always having something on the background, like YouTube videos or like series that I've already watched or movies I really love, like like a background movies, background noise. Because as they say in Baby Driver, I have a hum in the drum. I, I have a I don't know how you call this, but I forgot the name of that thing. Um, all this to say that um, I love My Hero Academia. I know that they released the second season, but you know Netflix. Uh, I think it's been a long time. I wanted to watch it, but the thing is, 
I, if I have, if I watch it, I have to wa pay attention to only that. And usually, what I do is I I split the screen. I put the whatever I'm watch the series I'm watching on Netflix on the right, and I do whatever I do on left, like paint, uh, write, uh, not write, but usually draw, paint, and and stuff. Um, so I I just regret that I haven't s watched it yet. So the next thing I'm going to watch, I think, is uh, My Hero Academia, and it's um. I think I'm, I also have some. I don't know if exactly what was the intent of the of the character, but it's. I think it's it poses the question like, and this this is a question that I've been dealing with uh, recently since I've left my job and tried to become a comic book artist, like trying to make a living from my art, uh, from my ideas basically. Is that, can you be, can you dream of becoming, something just because you feel like that's what you're meant to do i mean i know it sounds stupid but but it's a really important question right because it feels like you are throwing away your responsibilities and that's um, and i still feel guilty like uh, i i i think i'm i don't want to go on detail here i'll do another podcast about this but um it's i don't know for me because ex that's exactly what i'm doing like i have i've i've loved drawing and i've and I, I'm not a great writer, but I do believe I have interesting ideas. I, I do have interesting takes on things. I have interesting opinions on things. So, um, and uh, so yeah. So this is going on longer than I expected. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, the other thing I'm looking forward to, and actually in Bangkok they are like they are promoting as 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 a like a really very like they are pr promoting a lot is the s new series Sabrina, uh, the reboot of Sabrina. Um, to be honest, like when I was in India, I was watching a lot of series, but Sabrina was not one of them. I remember I would catch once in a while X Files, Buffy. I never, w I mean, I'm trying to catch up on a lot of stuff. I've never watched all the episodes of Buffy. I've never watched all the episodes of X Files, and my voice is breaking. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, so I'm I'm really looking forward to Sabrina. Um, so next time what I'll do is I'll again give you an update on all the things I talked about even other new th stuff that I've seen and uh, yeah I'm just saying like just because I don't have a guest doesn't mean that I can't do podcasts you see like I just did I just talked to myself um, and I just imagined talking to to an it's it's actually really dangerous I'm I'm really worried about this like if I can actually make a podcast just talking to myself, like <laughs> it means that in a way I feel that there is an invisible me uh, in this room, right? Which sounds great, scary. Okay. Anyway, um, thank you for listening. Like, and and I hope um, you've enjoyed it. I hope you've had some ideas about what to watch and. Uh, uh, or maybe what not to watch maybe it's I, I mean you you don't have to love everything right but you know these are the things I love books series animation everything art I love art and uh, I love you and thank you for listening this is Boris movie messenger uh, until next time um, where, where I see you with more information this is Boris movie messenger signing off